Welcome to RPG Community College. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a mod for Pathfinder Kingmaker that's going to make all the combat in the game turn-based. And to uh, give this video a little bit of structure, I'm going to be breaking it up into three parts. In the first part, I'm going to be showcasing the mod and kind of showing you what it's all about and giving you my thoughts on it. And then in the second part, I'll just have a nice short and sweet guide on how to install the mod properly. And the final section of the video is going to have a deeper mechanical explanation of how turn-based combat works in Pathfinder for those who aren't familiar with the tabletop game. And the timestamps for all of these sections can be found down in the description. But there is a lot to talk about, so let's take a look at this thing. This right here is going to be what combat looks like. The white circles here are going to show how far your character can move. The inner white circle is going to show the range of your move action. And the outer white circle will show you how far you can move if you decide to dash. Your character's red circle is going to show the range of their basic attacks. And any range of an ability that you're going to be using will be shown with a yellow circle. In the upper right up here, we also have the initiative order. There's also going to be some new actions that you're going to be able to use, like the 5 foot step and delay turn. And there's also going to be some icons representing the move action, attack action, and your swift action. When, and when you consume these actions on your turn, these icons will here will disappear. And if you don't know how any of these things work, I'll be explaining them in the last section of the video. But apart from the 5 foot step action, combat with this mod is going to be like any other turn based combat game. Every character will take a turn performing actions in the order of their initiative roll, starting with the highest. This is the combat system that the tabletop version of Pathfinder uses and it fits into this game seamlessly. It just, uh, it just feels really good to use. The mod was well made, it has very few bugs. And it's implemented in a way that it can be tiled on and off at any time. Like, uh, like, like I am a, a big fan of the real-time pause combat. And originally, I was a, a little skeptical about using a turn-based mod in a game where the encounters were like designed around a, a different combat system. And more than a few fights in the game are quite large. And they have a lot of enemies, and I thought this was going to make turn-based combat like really long and tedious. But since the mod can be toggled on and off at any time, you can easily switch back to real-time with pause just whenever it's convenient to do so. And this is probably the biggest contributor to me actually trying the mod for myself. And I was really glad I did, because I gotta say, after using it and doing a a couple runs to the Tenebra Steps, I actually do prefer it. And I don't mean that I prefer turn-based over real-time combat. What I mean is that I prefer having both of them and being able to toggle in between them at any time. With, uh, without getting into too much of a rant here, I just think there's, there's positives to both. And being able to pick and choose just kind of lets you have the best of both worlds. And really, what the turn-based mode is going to be adding to the gameplay is it's just going to be slowing it down drastically obviously, and it's going to allow you to like use every single character that you have effectively. Like since you can take the time and think out every action, you're going to be able to use every single one of your party members to their full potential. You'll definitely notice this the most with spellcasters. When you're doing combat in real time, like more often than not, uh, when I was using my spellcasters at least to deal damage, like, the, the only time I would really ever use the targeted AoE abilities would be at the beginning of the fight, or I would wait for them to all stack around my front line and then use them at that point. And all spellcasters also have to go through, like, an animation as well when they're casting their spells. And during this whole process of, you know, waiting for the enemy to move, and then you have to, you know, play the animation to cast your spell, uh, these people that were maybe behind you in the initiative order have more than likely probably already taken their turn and done everything they needed to do. They've moved, they've dealt damage, you know, they've, they've gotten to act. But with the turn-based mod, you're able to, you know, like CC them away from the party more effectively. You're able to catch them in clumps when they're not like just huddled around your front line dealing damage to it. 
your spellcasters are just going to be much more effective with the turn-based combat mod enabled. And because the enemies aren't constantly moving and taking actions at the same time as you, it's going to feel a lot better to play as well. And this is going to make the game easier, obviously. But I think that's okay though. I think Pathfinder Kingmaker had some difficulty to spare for most people. But if you are going to play with the turn-based mod enabled, I do recommend uh, cranking the difficulty up one level above what you normally play. I mean, unless not playing Pathfinder for a month somehow makes you better on coming back to the game and trying this mod, I was definitely having a much easier time than when I was playing real time with pause. All in all, this is a great mod, and if you're at all interested in it, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. You can install this mod mid playthrough, and it's incredibly easy to do so, and I'll be going over that in a couple seconds here. But make sure if you download the mod, if you like it and you enjoy using it, be sure to endorse it and show the creator a little love. Installing the mod is going to be pretty straightforward, but there is one thing I want to talk about before I show you. And this is going to be about permissions issues. If you have Pathfinder Kingmaker installed in your Program Files folder, which is the default installation directory for Steam, you're going to run into, the, into some permissions issues where the security features of Windows won't let other programs change the files and the folders of anything located inside your Program Files folders. And this is going to include Pathfinder Kingmaker. So if you want to mod the game and you don't want to run into any issues, I would highly recommend installing it on the top level of your hard drive like I've done here. Inside, I just have it inside a folder called games. And this will prevent any issues that you could have with Windows preventing you from modding any of your games. And if you have had trouble in the past installing mods with Pathfinder Kingmaker, this is likely going to be the culprit of those problems because it is fairly straightforward, like I'll show you right now. Right here we have the mod page for the turn-based combat mod. There's a lot of information on here. It's going to go over everything that this mod does and all of the options that are inside of it. Uh, I'd recommend giving it a read, you know, just so you know what it's all about. There's a lot more information here than what I can go over in the video. But before we download this, we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find the link to the Unity Mod Manager. You're going to want to download this program and then point it to your Pathfinder Kingmaker installation directory, wherever that might be. And now we can go back and download the turn-based combat mod. You can just manually, manually download it. Don't download it with a mod manager. And now you just take the zip file and drop it where it says to drop the zip file. After that, the turn-based mod should pop up in the little window above where you drop the zip file. And all you have to do is right-click on it and hit install. And then to uninstall it, you just right-click on it and click uninstall. It's that simple and straightforward. When you go into the game, you can access the mod menu by hitting Control and F10 by default. And it's also going to pop up when you first start the game as well. And in here, you're going to be able to disable and enable the mod, or tweak any of the settings. So let's talk about the mechanics changes of the turn-based mode. Most of the rules for a lot of the actions that you're going to take are going to be the same, and you're going to have some new actions to use as well, like delay turn and five foot step. And I'm going to start by talking about initiative. This is something that is in the base game, but it's pretty ineffectual. I don't think too many people focused on their initiative in the base game, but it is going to be a little bit more important in the turn-based mod. You're going to see uh, it have a lot bigger impact because it's going to decide the order in which you're, everybody's able to act. And if your party is allowed to act before the enemies, you're probably going to kill some enemies and you're going to be preventing a lot of damage in your party and your initiative is going to be decided by rolling a d20 and adding your initiative modifier. The initiative order is going to be displayed in the top right of the screen with the with the highest on the top and the lowest on the bottom. There's really not much more to it than that. So let's start talking about all of the actions that you're going to be able to take. Every character is going to be able to take a standard action, a move action, and a swift action. 
There are also things called a free action, and those don't really consume anything. You'll just be able to do them for free. They're a free action. A standard action is usually used to attack or cast a spell. A move action is, you guessed it, used to move. And the swift action is pretty much just used to use abilities that are labeled as swift actions, like the Inquisitor's Judgments or their Bane ability are some good examples. I know I'm not really blowing anybody's mind here, but I have to lay down the base knowledge so that we can build on top of it. Because there are some things that aren't uh, very apparent to someone who doesn't really know the rules. Like you're going to be able to use your move action to make more attacks in a round. This is called a full attack. Or you can use your standard action to move further in your round than what a move action would normally allow you to. This is called a dash, which I'll, which I'll explain right now. If you uh, notice on the screen, you're going to see a big white circle. And then inside of that big white circle is going to be a smaller white circle. And that smaller white circle is going to be the distance that you can move with the move action. And even if you take one step with your character, you're going to consume your move action. And there's no way to undo any of your actions, so think carefully before you act. But if you find that you need to move a little bit more, you can consume your standard action, and you can move to the end of the second white circle. Now since you're consuming your standard action, you're not going to be able to attack or cast any spells. The only thing you're going to be able to do is use any abilities that are considered swift actions or free actions. Dashing is pretty simple, but making a full attack is a bit more rules heavy. If you just use your standard action to attack with a martial class, you're only ever going to make one attack. If you want to make multiple attacks in a round, you need to do what's called a full attack. And this is going to consume your move action and your standard action. This is also going to apply to anyone who's dual wielding. Or if you're a sorcerer casting spells with metamagic. You actually have to have a source of additional attacks though in order to make a full attack. If you don't have an offhand weapon, or your basic attack bonus isn't high enough to give you a second attack, then making a full attack is going to do nothing for you. There are also some abilities and some feats that are going to require you to make a full attack in order to take advantage of them. The most common of these is probably going to be Rapid Shot. This is a feat a lot of bow users take. And if you read the description of the feat, in order to get the extra attack on your turn, you have to make a full attack. So if you move at all on your turn, you're not going to be able to use Rapid Shot because you need to consume both your standard action and your move action in order to make a full attack. Unless you use one of the new actions that you're going to be able to use with the turn-based mod called Five Foot Step. And this does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to make a five foot step. If you choose to make a five foot step though, you will not be able to move any further than just five feet. But it won't consume your move action if you choose to do so. It also won't provoke attacks of opportunity. So like say, if you were going to take a shot from your bow, and there was an enemy that was close to you, you could take a five foot step action and step away from him, and then you wouldn't provoke an attack of opportunity from the movement or from firing your bow. Most of the time though, what you're probably going to be using this for is with your melee classes. Sometimes some enemies will just be a tad bit out of reach of uh, your melee attacks. And even if you have to take one step, you will consume your move action and you won't be able to make a full attack. But if you take a five foot step, You'll be able to move closer in on them and get your character into melee range and you'll be able to make a full attack and you won't provoke any attack of opportunity with the movement. I find myself using this a lot just to move in a little closer and make sure that I'm in range of my enemies because the, the range indicator isn't exactly perfect, like there's a small amount of leeway, but I have been screwed over on a couple of attacks by thinking that I was in range when I really wasn't. So I use the five foot step ability a lot just to make sure that I'm going to be able to perform a full attack because it's a pretty huge DPS loss when you miss out on making full attacks. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is delay. This is super simple. All you gotta do if you want to delay your turn is click delay and then click on someone's name in the initiative order and then you will move below them in the initiative and you will take your actions after they've taken their actions. Doesn't get any more complicated than that. 
And that's going to be all for this video. If you think I've missed anything, or you've got uh, anything to add, anything I've said, be sure to leave it down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you'd like to continue your education, enrollment is free, all you have to do is like and subscribe. I wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors, and I hope to see you again soon.